Hi, Laura and Susan. In case you don't know, this is your father. And I went to the doctor Monday. He feels pretty confident that I do have prostate cancer. Plus, he informs me that the ultrasound showed a very, very large aorta aneurysm. You think it's difficult to say, try to spell it. The doctors want you in bed because any undue lifting or exertion or any damn thing could cause that aneurysm to explode and you're a goner. So what choice do you have of it to have the operation? And I said, I do have a choice. Because I am seriously considering whether before 7.30 tomorrow morning, I can put an end to this very nice life which you girls have been a part of for many, many years. I imagine the morning was foggy the day Dad made that tape. Mom and my brother were with him. I wasn't there. What Dad said was shocking, dazzling, really. He liked to do that to us. Maybe he thought it was the best way to get to the truth. You see, you're making progress. So keep working that's my brother, Mike, sitting. But that's not my dad in the hospital bed. Well, I had just finished spending about two weeks in Illinois with my wife's father, who was in the hospital, dealing with him having a stroke. So I return July 2nd on Monday, and I get my answering machine messages, and one is from mom with the simple message that your dad is going to be operated on tomorrow. I'll call you later with more details. <laughs> Click. I, had, I played the message several times. I wanted to make sure that it was actually my mother that was calling and it was, and that it was my father that was, um, had to be operated on the following day. So it was, it was bizarre. It started off bizarre, and of course it, it never got any less bizarre. Bizarre. Like the aneurysm on my father's aorta. A big fat bulge where the blood pushes out because the artery is too clogged with fat. The surgeon comes, he says, I can't operate today. And tomorrow I've got two open heart surgeries. Wednesday's 4th of July, so Thursday morning at 7.30, we will open you up and take care of the aneurysm. And then we'll worry about the prostate cancer. Here we go. And okay. It was a hectic morning when Mike called to say that he got a message on his answering machine from mom saying that daddy was in the hospital with an aneurysm. I sort of figured that this was not really that serious, that it was, I mean, an aneurysm was serious, but it was a totally operable seriousness. So you could just cut the piece out and you'd splice it together and it was not gonna be a big deal. When the surgeon told him, I can't operate on you till Thursday morning, I want you to stay here for three days on a liquid diet, your father said, no way. I'm not staying here and have you guys poke at me. For three days, I will go home and I'll take your liquid diet at home. He is not a very good patient. Dad preferred to be at home, in his pajamas. Actually, this footage was shot a few years before. Dad and Mom always seemed to be working on a TV pilot. Good afternoon. Welcome to Bob's Deli. Now, you'll notice I've left everything in the cans because there's no point in dirtying dishes. That's ridiculous. The peas and the corn should not cook as long as the other stuff. Name two pronouns. Name two pronouns? He and she. Del, remember your second banana. I'm the director, I'm the producer, I'm That's... the writer. You're just a beautiful angel with that glass. I didn't know they were making another movie as they waited for Dad's surgery. Or that Laura and I, at home with our own children, were the intended audience. It was 4th of July, Independence Day. Tomorrow morning at uh, 7.30, 
I go to the hospital to um, be operated on. The odds of my, of my having complications are pretty good, in my opinion. It may not be in the opinion of the professionals who, after all, have to make mortgage payments and have to make Mercedes payments. However, in my judgment, my odds of, non, of a non-complicating major surgery, the odds are very, very slim. And I'm trying to make a judgment as to what to do. But I am 77 years old. I still have my sanity and my reasoning capability. I have been reasonably financial, financially successful in this world using my smarts, very thoroughly learning, analyzing a particular situation, putting a, a mental scale in place upon which I put the pluses and the minuses and use the cost-benefit ratio, and where the benefit far exceeds the cost, then I go for the deal. What kind of man looks at his life as if it were a balance sheet? A self-made businessman like my dad. What kind of family would listen to such talk? A family that looked at the world with dad's voice always in the background. Laura, the eldest, was a born manager. Mike, the youngest, was the peacemaker. I was the writer, the critic. Dad wanted me to write articles about rags to riches entrepreneurs. His generation had no doubts. The self-made man is an American hero. But if we celebrate the self-made man, can we accept the self-made death? That seemed to be my father's question that Independence Day. <laughs>